they did a good job, you know, and there's because there there's a ton after, you know, we watch film in the morning with them. Uh, they have tomorrow, they have have Sundays off, so um, there's no film work or any meetings or anything on Sunday. So today was their first day back, and it was the first day for us as a coaching staff to watch the best teams tape with them, watch the offensive tape, the defensive tape. So, you know, made the necessary corrections that um, uh, uh, cleaning up what we did on uh, Saturday night, and then come out here, you know, with a sense of purpose about getting better. And I thought they did a good job on that. So. Did you get a chance to look at Fresno and Weber State yet at all? Yeah, Bro broke them all down. So. What do you take away from that game there? Good team, real good quarterback. Um, you know, younger brother of, of uh, first pick in the NFL draft. And, but, you know, boys can really throw the ball really well. Um, I think they're big on the offensive line. Uh, they did a really nice job protecting them. They got a running back that's strong and tough to take down. You know, you got to make sure you wrap them up when you get there. Um, defensively, you know, that's kind of Coach DeRuiter's specialty. He was a defense coordinator at Texas A&M and before that at the Air Force. And uh, he runs a nice scheme. He's a 3-4 odd scheme guy. He can blitz you from a lot of different angles. So um, it's, it's a good team, you know, and it's, uh, it's a first-year coach. So we, we've got to watch some different tapes again from some other schools to get some more background on them. But at least we got one game under the belt like we didn't have. Um, with Arkansas State, so at least we got one film to kind of watch and get an idea of how they're going to implement their plan. But, um, should be a good team coming in here. Biggest what? difference between uh, DeRoder and, and Pat Hill, is it just that they're throwing the ball more right now? I, I mean, I, I mean, it's one game. I have, we haven't played Fresno in a long time, so I haven't broken down any of We didn't watch any of Fresno tapes. So. What does Carr do well? He throws the ball extremely well, very accurate. Um, I don't know his exact name. He may have been like, I think he was 25 to 30 or 20 to 25. There's only like five incompletions in there. So. Very accurate. You know, he's going to beat you throwing the football. So. Did you end up having to form your playbook very deep at all? Do you feel like you're able to you know, help some things back as the game? No, I, I, I love that statement. We never, we don't go into games saying let's do this. Oh, let's I'm not asking going into the game. I'm, I'm getting no. as the game played I mean, out. Our game plan was we ran what our game plan was going in. So our game plan was was executed in terms of what we wanted to do going into those games. And, and we never make any decisions about what we're we're going to run or not going to run by how much we show here. I've seen, I mean, I've, I, I'm not, I don't understand that concept because if you do that and all of a sudden you go, well, we need to have this route in, but we didn't practice it because we didn't think we were going to need it, then you're in trouble. So, um, you know, a lot of it is expressed on, um, you know, how they defend, how they came out and, and really how they came out was what we kind of had practiced against, which was a good thing. You know, we thought they were going to be a four down front team and do a little bit of odd situations for us, and that's how they came out. So our game plan kind of played out the way we thought it was going to play out. What did you take away from Byron's play now that you got to see the, see the game film? Um, happy, you know, number one, ball security, did a great job at that. Um, got a chance to really get him. You know, I, again, didn't know, you know, are you going to get him in a game and get him five reps, or you get him, we ended up getting 20 something carries. So um, he could tote the ball a little bit, and, and he didn't seem like he got fatigued. But he's a kid that's always been a workout junkie. So that part, um, I wasn't as, as concerned with as maybe some other guys coming out. Um, but it, it's just great to get real good film to show him. And there's a couple cuts I'm sure he wanted back. You know, there's a third and one where he kind of hesitated, where if he just kind of ran behind his pads, we still would have had a first down to come off the field. But, you know, he didn't know it was third down. You know, and, and that, that's going to happen at times. But you know, just getting an understanding of what the game's all about was the best thing for us. But, you know, I think he's got a bright future, and I was kind of excited Did you to get him in there. Sorry. Did you purposely want to feed him? He has many carries. 22 no. carries for number three backs. A lot. We, didn't, we didn't have. I mean, we weren't gonna. I wasn't gonna put six and 24 back in because we were up 50. So, you know, like I said yesterday, Aaron, if, you know, one of those guys gets hurt when you're up 50, then that's the big question, and that's the the fine line of, you know, I mean, you see people and you're like, God, you know, we got to get them some work, but you can't get them the, the work at the at the sake of being, you know, not available for the next thing. So, you know, no, it was I, really, I mean, sorry. it was really just. Um, the, the way the game kind of played itself out and, and, and what our game plan was, you know, you, you got to understand when you're out there, like, what are we doing? Who else is in the game? How much are we going to throw it? That's another thing sometimes when you get up that big, you know, it's, you know, I saw people do it before. And, and what are they doing throwing the ball with three minutes to go in a game up 60? You know, like, and there's a point in time where you say, hey, we got to get our guys developed, but there's also someone else on, on that other sideline. So, Who were some of the other guys, Chip, that may have jumped out at you when you, when you looked at the tape? There was nobody. I mean, I, I get that question, and I don't know how it's answered. Is that you know most of the guys that we know played the way we expected them to play. We see them every day, so there's not. And we talk about it. I heard Carson say it the other day, and it's a big mantra of our football team: is you don't rise to the occasion, you sink to your preparation. So if we feel good about our preparation, when a guy goes in a game, it's not like oh my God, look what he did. It's 
that's what we expect them to do. So I think our guys, um, you know, for the most part, played the way we expect them to. I think a couple guys got, got caught up in the bright lights in a big city, and it was their first experience on that stage. And we hope if, if they get a second opportunity for that to happen, that it'll settle down and be a little bit not as, oh, my God, there's 60,000 people or whatever it is watching them play here. You know, it's a little bit different. But, um, you know, I would say that the guys that, that played well, we kind of expected to play well because we see it every day in practice. So. The guys that we felt were, you know, really get standout efforts for us, you can go back and say on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday they had standout efforts for us too. So.